The 2022 space race ended with huge successes for the U.S. and China. The most impressive name is definitely Elon Musk SpaceX. With 61 flights, SpaceX tied a record set by the Soviet R-7 rocket, which in 1980 flew a combined 61 missions across its Soyuz, Molnaya, and Vostok variants. And for every winner, there must be a loser. Russia clearly had a terrible year in space. The country only launched 22 times. Most seriously, its best spacecraft, Soyuz, has been stuck on ISS for weeks. In an attempt to potentially secure an alternate lifeboat for two Russian cosmonauts and one NASA astronaut, NASA and Russian space agency Roscosmos are conducting a review of available options, which included inquiring with SpaceX about using one of its Dragon capsules as a replacement for Soyuz MS-22. This is definitely the time Russia's cosmonauts realize SpaceX Dragon is better than Soyuz after damage. Find out everything about it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. On December 15, 2022, the Soyuz spacecraft MS-22 suffered a significant coolant leak while docked at the ISS just prior to a planned Russian spacewalk. While the leaky Soyuz poses no immediate danger to the space station or its crew, it remains unknown if the Soyuz craft is flight-worthy. As such, the MS-22 crew no longer has a viable lifeboat in the event of an emergency. As a result, NASA inquired about using a SpaceX Dragon capsule to bring astronauts home from the ISS. Following the recent leak aboard the Russian Soyuz capsule, a NASA blog post has stated, a previous report published by Reuters stated the same, but NASA's blog post confirms the agency is, in fact, mulling using a SpaceX Dragon spacecraft for an ISS lifeboat. Another option is for Roscosmos to send a replacement Soyuz spacecraft, but the earliest such a mission could launch is February, according to statements made by Sergei Kirkolev, the head of the Yuri Gargarin Cosmonaut Training Center near Moscow. Roscosmos is still investigating the cause of the leak and plans to issue its findings this month. Whatever the cause of the leak, the damaged Soyuz spacecraft presents a significant safety concern for the MS-22 crew. Russian cosmonauts Sergei Prokopayev and Dmitry Patelin and NASA astronaut Frank Rubio arrived at the ISS aboard the now-damaged Soyuz on September 22nd and were scheduled to return to Earth March 28. Also on station are NASA astronauts Nicole Mann and Josh Kasada, Japan's Koichi Wakata, and Russia's Anna Kakina, who arrived aboard the SpaceX Crew Dragon in early October. That makes seven spacefarers. But with the Soyuz most likely gone for good, only four people could get to safety in the event something went wrong. And this perilous situation would last weeks to months before a new spacecraft could be sent to the space station, according to Tommaso Segoba, the executive director of the International Association for the Advancement of Space Safety, IAASS, and former head of spaceflight safety at the European Space Agency. He shared the leaky Soyuz is a huge risk. This would most probably be the first time in the space station has no full lifeboat capability, it's my personal feeling, but if it's true, we have a big problem with the space station. We are missing the crew escape system. If something goes wrong aboard the ISS, some crew members would have to stay behind. At the time this report was made, SpaceX had yet to issue a comment regarding the possibility of sending the Dragon capsule to ISS to replace the beleaguered Soyuz MS-22. However, it's hoped that NASA and SpaceX will soon have a solution to the problem. Luckily, this didn't happen three years ago. You go back a decade, the U.S. depended on Russia to launch NASA astronauts to the ISS after the agency retired the space shuttle fleet in 2011. The U.S. re-emerged as a space power with human spaceflight capability in 2020 as SpaceX launched NASA astronauts from American soil for the first time. Since then, Dragon has been increasingly asserting its ability. The Dragon is the best short answer, Japanese aerospace agency astronaut Soichi Noguchi says, comparing the experience to riding NASA's space shuttles and Russia's Soyuz spacecraft. Unlike three parts called modules of the Soyuz capsule, Crew Dragon just includes two sections as well. That's the crew module and the trunk. The crew module is designed like the Apollo command modules that carried astronauts to the moon. 
The trunk has solar panels, heat removal radiators, space for cargo, and fins to provide stability during emergency aborts. Together, the capsule and trunk stand around 8.1 meters tall with a diameter of 4 meters, a little bigger than Soyuz. As a result, it gives the astronauts more space. A Soyuz just has room for three people to ride in it. Meanwhile, a Crew Dragon includes seating for up to seven astronauts, although NASA won't be using more than four at a time for the commercial crew program. After that, due to concerns about G-force on splashdown, SpaceX was required to change the angle of the seats. This meant SpaceX could no longer fit seven seats, causing them to reduce it to four. Regardless, it still has more capacity than the Soyuz. It's much too small and tight, complains Dutch European Space Agency astronaut Andre Koopers of the Russian Soyuz spacecraft. What's more, it's more convenient. As SpaceX engineer John Federspiel said, the company had wanted to make Crew Dragon feel like a 21st century spaceship. He explains, probably one of the biggest features of Dragon are the touch screens on the inside. We designed them to just not be only functional, but have a user experience in mind. The other capsules were very much designed with an airplane cockpit in mind. Their sheet metal instrument panels were studded with hundreds of switches, dials, lights, and analog gauges. Their simple onboard computers were controlled by a mechanical keyboard. The commander flew those ships the same way you'd fly a plane, with a control stick determining velocity, altitude, attitude, and direction. The Dragon designer swept all that away, replacing everything, including the control stick, with three large touchscreens facing four side-by-side -side seats. Each screen is capable of calling up as many as 10 sets of displays, allowing the crew to focus on a particular set of systems, guidance, environmental, electrical, and more. Doug Hurley, the commander of the first crewed SpaceX mission, which launched in May of 2020, said you have an overall systems page on the screen and then you can drill down into individual pages as well. There's a total of 25 to 30 individual pages, and SpaceX may have added some more since my flight. With any aircraft or spacecraft, you always iterate because it makes sense and it's easy and will help the crew. Ideally, the spacecraft helps the astronauts so much they have virtually nothing to do with the ship operating nearly autonomously. Ultimately, SpaceX's biggest strength is undoubtedly its price. A seat on Dragon is much cheaper than one on Soyuz. With the partly reusable Falcon 9 rocket and partially reusable Dragon spacecraft versus a fully expendable Soyuz system, SpaceX charges half the price. A seat on Dragon 2 costs $55 million, and on Soyuz, it costs $89 million. In the future, a seat on the giant Starship system is estimated to be even cheaper despite the larger size. In February 2019, Elon Musk stated, I'm confident moving to Mars will one day cost less than $500,000 and maybe even below $100,000. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.